This week, Aubrey and I put together the first major content update for Receiver. The first edition is a mini maglite flashlight. You can either find one, or if you're lucky, you start out with one. You'll occasionally encounter rooms that are almost pitch black, so you need a flashlight before you can explore those rooms properly. I did some research about how flashlights are really used with guns, and the most practical method here seems to be the Harry's technique. To see how that works in real life, pretend you're holding a gun in one hand and a flashlight in the other. Then bring your flashlight hand under the gun hand and press the backs of your hands together. This way the gun is stable and the flashlight always points in the direction that you're aiming. When not aiming, you pull the light back next to your head. If you need both hands free, like for reloading, then you hold the flashlight in your teeth. The flashlight does run out of batteries eventually, but it usually lasts for a few hours, depending on how much charge it has when you find it. You should still put the light away when you don't need it, because it can make it harder to see the light coming from enemies. The next addition is a Smith & Wesson Model 10 Revolver. It's much simpler than the 1911 in some ways. It has no magazine, no safety, and no slide. It also has a double action trigger, which means that pulling the trigger will cock the hammer for you, although it takes a few extra milliseconds to do that. If you want the most responsive trigger possible, you can still manually cock the hammer. To reload, you open the cylinder, press the extractor rod to remove shell casings, add six new bullets, and close the cylinder. When bullets are fired, the explosion can force the casings to expand, so sometimes they don't come out easily. If this happens, you can just push the extractor repeatedly until they come out. If this is confusing, you can always press question mark to pull up the in-game help. That will display all your controls, and a simple AI will highlight the key you should press next, in order to make your gun ready to fire. You can also spin the cylinder using the mouse wheel. There's no real practical reason to do this, but it seemed incomplete to include a revolver without the ability to do that. The other new gun is the Glock 17. This one is also simpler than the 1911, because it has no safety switch and no external hammer. It has a much bigger magazine as well, holding up to 17 bullets. This particular one also has a full auto modification that you can see on the back of the slide. When the small hourglass is visible on the right, it can fire the entire magazine in about a second. This is almost always a bad idea, but can sometimes come in handy as a last resort. The final change was inspired by a rock paper shotgun write-up in which the author mentioned that he wanted to bring the gun close to his eye so he could see the sights better. I added this slider for anyone who wants to do that, and trade some peripheral vision for a larger sight picture. If you'd like to try these new features, you can get the update from the Humble Store page, or the Overgrowth pre-order forum, or, if you haven't bought Receiver yet, you can get it at wolfhire.com slash receiver for $5, or you can get it for free by pre-ordering Overgrowth at wolfhire.com slash pre-order. We would also like to get Receiver on Steam, so that users can add it to their library and easily get automatic updates. If you would like that, then we need your votes on Steam Greenlight. If we do get on Steam, then we'll give out Steam keys to everyone who has bought it directly, or pre-ordered Overgrowth. The source code and Unity project for Receiver are also available now if you'd like to try modding the game or figuring out how it works. The links for Greenlight and for the source code repository are in the description for this video and also on the Receiver website.